Hey, and welcome back to UC, where we cover retro gaming and home arcade. If you want to stay up to date, hit that subscribe button and make sure to enable all notifications and you'll be covered for everything home arcade. Still waiting on my review unit for the MVSX. Apparently, there's only one cabinet and it's being shipped around round robin to different YouTubers and really wish I'd have got it first, but is what it is. I will have an honest review for you guys soon. Can't tell you when yet. Uh, you'll know as soon as I know. But I am optimistic. I do think it's going to be a good product. There's reason to believe it is a compelling arcade, and we're going to talk more about it later. First, I want to get into the new Arcade One Up announcement. Just kind of a quiet job posting in the middle of a Facebook Arcade One Up global fan page. And that is they're hiring more testers, more beta testers for Arcade One Up cabinets. And there's this funny picture here. I can't blow it up full screen. Facebook gives me an error. But uh, John D apparently was a tester for Metal Gear Solid and it looks like he's being interviewed here. So we've got like a 13 year old John D apparently uh, who worked on Metal Gear Solid. I wish he could give us some, give me some tips on Metal Gear Solid. I'm trash at that game. So they are adding testers and I say this is a good thing. Arcade One Up has never been strong on software. They just haven't. They have had some cabinets with good software, Star Wars Arcade, NBA Jam. Those were done by Code Mystics. The ones they do themselves is just bare bones. The emulation wasn't bad. It's pretty decent in a lot of their cabinets, but the software itself, you know, the menu design, uh, the lack of dip switch settings, those things, it just has been very, very basic. Remember when Arcade One Up first launched, they thought this product was just like a fun decor item to have that you show off to your friends. Turns out people really want to play them and take them seriously, and they want something that approximates the real arcade experience. I think Arcade One Up has gotten that memo, but I do think they've been a little slow on the uptake for stepping up their software game. At Games is a very software-driven company. I think iArcade is going to be a very software-driven company. Arcade One Up is going to have to beef up their team, and that looks like what they're doing. Now, I don't know if this is a reaction to the Super Pac-Man gaffe or not. Super Pac-Man wasn't really a bug. Super Pac-Man was just really a bad product design. They mapped the fire button to the wrong button. And we don't know if they have a clear way to update the cabinet or not. It is not Wi-Fi enabled. So the only way to connect to it is with the micro USB port on the PCB or replace the PCB. Uh, neither is a great solution, but, you know, hopefully they give us one or the other and they do it soon so that we can, you know, people that bought that cabinet can really enjoy it. This particular role doesn't seem like it would help with it. It's, it says it's more about finding bugs than playing the game and giving input. So, although that wasn't a bug, there have been bugs before. If you guys remember the old Galaga, that had a bug where it would not save a score over 100,000 points. It wasn't a huge deal, and they did eventually fix it, but you'd have to get a new PCB to get that fixed. There were sound glitches with uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm not just talking about the music being different. That was a licensing issue, but there were glitches with the sound effects. If they happen at a certain time, the sound effect from hitting the hit button, I think it was, then you wouldn't hear the sound. So they have had some small bugs over the years, and it's good to see they're going to have a bigger team to help address those things. And if you read through the comments, there are just an army of people here ready to go to work, uh, many of them who sound very promising, a lot of really good experience. So my hope and expectation is Arcade One Up will find a good group of people to come in and help and help run their QA team. Or support their QA team, I should add. All right, next up, the At Games Legends Ultimate 1.1 is in stores. And we know officially that the 1.1 has the same PCB as the 1.0. It is the same hardware uh, internally. It's really just that the control panel is swappable. It's compatible with some new accessories. You guys probably already knew that, but I just wanted to share with you this confirmation that the computer inside the PCB is identical. And the control panel though is swappable. Here's a photo of it. It being swappable is, is a nice design improvement. The artwork is slightly improved, but then you also be able to update the artwork yourself with official skin. So that looks pretty cool. Next up, the Neo Geo. I mentioned at the beginning, I don't have a review cabinet yet. There's one review cabinet. It's going around Robin to different YouTubers. I'm going to be doing a review too. I'm on that list. I don't know when it's coming. I'm super jealous. Ralph got it first. I would have loved for it to have been me, but it'll be soon enough. The overall view of this from the public and from people looking at it seem to be it's a really good product. Now, there do seem to be two issues that I happen to consider somewhat minor, but for those of you that are real purists, this might be a big deal or even a deal breaker. 
with the MVSX cabinet. Number one, the biggest one that a lot of people are talking about, there's no blood in Metal Slug, for example, and there was a BIOS setting where you could switch blood on and off in the real game, in the original, in the arcade, but that isn't present here. There doesn't seem to be a user accessible way to do it. Now, I'm waiting to see if this is firmware updatable. If this is something people are really upset about, then I think we're gonna probably get an update, and, or at least I would hope we're gonna get an update that would fix this, would allow access to those BIOS settings. This is a common theme. We can't get into the dip switch on most arcade one-ups. This is something that seems to be overlooked for one reason or another with a lot of these arcade companies and people are, are upset that you're not getting the blood in the game. So again, not a big deal to me. Uh, you may not care about this and I'm not saying you should care about it, but to some folks this is important. The other issue is the resolution. So the monitor that this comes with is five by four, but the games themselves were four by three. They were presented on a four by three CRT monitor. And apparently, and this is from Rex, from Rex for Show, he's a little bit bigger nerd than I am. He tells me there were two different resolutions for MVS games, but both of them were stretched out to fill a full four by three CRT. And so if you play the games in pixel perfect mode on this cabinet, the MVSX, it will letterbox it to be uh, the original resolution, but it will not then stretch that resolution to fill what would have been the equivalent of a 4x3 CR, CRT. So the resolution presentation apparently isn't quite perfect. Not uncommon to see these gaps when you move from a CRT to an LCD. They're just two completely different display technologies. There are ways to improve it. And again, hopefully we see that with some kind of firmware update at some point. But I wanted to get that out there now uh, in advance of the review that I plan to do. But the cabinet looks good. I think it, this may represent a high watermark in quality for bringing a retro arcade, not just a multi-cade, but something that actually looks and feels and works like what you had in the arcade. And that's the beauty of the MVS platform. It was its own multi-cade, but it was real, it was official. And so doing a re-release of that couldn't be a better fit for our home arcades. You get one cabinet, 50 games, and it is unconfirmed but possible that there will be release of more games later. Also, uh, pre-orders are open. So if you decide you want to pre-order, uh, we're going to have distribution to the 48 states, Australia, UK, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, Greece, and Belgium. I can't believe they got distribution that wide out of the gate. I think that's amazing. Good for them. Many of those countries are still waiting on arcade one-up availability. And if you pre-order now, you will get a Terry Bogard uh, figurine from King of Fighters. Kind of neat, and that will be free of charge. That's 500 bucks if you want the whole package, or 450 if you just want the tabletop. Next up, a lot of you have Nintendo Switches. A lot of people in general have Nintendo Switches. And what does that have to do with retro gaming? Well, they have the NES games and the SNES games that are playable on the Switch. If you do the uh, yearly online Nintendo plan, I think it's 20 bucks a year. Some people have complained about that. I think it's a pretty good value for how many games you get. The trick is if you want to buy the NES Switch controller or the Super Nintendo Switch controller, you got to pay extra. I think it's 60 bucks, uh, $30 a piece for the Super Nintendo controllers, and then it's 50 or 60 for two NES controllers. I have all that gear. It takes up a ridiculous amount of space on my coffee table, but it is nice to be able to play these games with the legit controllers. Donkey Kong Country 2 is coming. Jokes on them. I've already got that on my Super Nintendo Mini, but that is a great game. Uh, arguably a lot better than the original Donkey Kong. Mario Super Picross, I don't think I've played that. And then the Peacekeepers, I definitely haven't played. And then for NES, we get SCAT. Don't make any jokes in the comments. That stands for Special Cybernetic Attack Team. So we get four new games coming soon. Uh, good that they continue to support this. And next up and related, the Super Mario 3D All-Stars, which is available for pre-order. Link below. If you want to support the channel, use that Amazon affiliate link. Super appreciate it. And the reviews are in and they look good. Now, some people are upset that these games are emulated. These are not native ports to bring Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and Mario Galaxy to the Switch. They are simply running an emulator that is packaged with the game. I doubt any of you care. If you're watching this channel, you probably have a Legends Ultimate, or you probably have an arcade one up. Those are all running emulators and that's what this is. Now, is 60 bucks for this package a little bit steep? Yeah, I think it's a little bit steep, but it's Nintendo. They can do it. They're going to sell it. I pre-ordered mine. I pre-ordered the digital version. 
Uh, can't wait to get it. It is going to be a limited release, so make sure you pick it up if you plan to. Do that right away. The fact that this has Mario 64, which is a Nintendo 64 game, makes me think we're not going to see a Nintendo 64 games added to the Switch Online service like we do Super Nintendo and original Nintendo, which is, in my opinion, unfortunate. But I still want a 64 Mini. I think we're a couple years out from them ever releasing it, if ever. But dare to dream. Thanks for watching. That's the news for retro gaming this past week. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Dripping light, paint the sky.